Still in the African influence series after the subject of our ancestors Ziryab, which spoke about the last week, which raised the level of excellence during the period of the Renaissance, giving birth to the art of living, I named for the subject of this week Pablo Ruiz Picasso. Today's topic demonstrates how he and his peers has been influenced by the creation of our ancestors. I could do a series of talking about how each one of them appropriate, appropriate themselves or tribal art. But talking about one of them, moreover not the least, it's already talking about all of them. Kiam vote yenge kieno to each one of you. I am Mumba. Welcome to Ask Art Spirituality Congo Kachopa, the channel that tells you about how our culture, in particular through art and spirituality, has inspired this world without them admitting it to you. The channel, which among so many others, wants to arouse enthusiasm for our traditions and the desire to reclaim our ancestors have bequeathed to us. The approach of the art of this artist was unconventional. Picasso was therefore an artist of Spanish origin who lived most of his life in France. Having arrived in Paris in 19, he approached the art world in total independence without integrating the classical circuit formed by the formative structure. He worked during the period of the different artistic currents such as modern art, surrealism, blue period, pink period, uh, expressionism and so on. We are in 1907, Picasso goes to the Trocadero Museum the first ethnographic museum in Paris, the place where all the statuette works demo was demonstrated, our African tradition were exhibited. And from there, the clique from so-called primitive art was born. Under this influence, Pablo Picasso first fell in love with the Feng mask, which came to us from Gabon. The artist then discovered a universe different from what he had known before. Aesthetics silhouette the simplification of the face. This revelation allows him to approach his work in a all different way. Many of his work are greatly inspired by tribal art. The encounter between the artist and these African fabrications revolutionizes Picasso's artistic conception to such an extent that he only creates around these uh, this idea. He only creates around these influences for years and not only just a period of two years like some are saying for not discrediting him. And this gave rise to works such as Les Demoiselles d'Avignon, the work that will propel the artist to a rank of notoriety from there will follow multiple works just as expressive with a line that seduces by their strength and unconventional, unconventional way. <laughs> From there, then, the birth of the Cubism and it takes its roots in Africa. It is with the current of Cubism that Picasso takes off towards a notoriety so valued until today. Faraka is a village in Ivory Coast famous for its painting on cotton. Its inhabitants whose elder told them the story attest that Mr. Picasso went in person to the village in 1968. And when we analyze the painting painted in this village, we curiously find Picasso there. Picasso would therefore have taken the artist's ways of this anonymous African artist to Europe. This now becoming the Pinocchio style, <clears throat> slip of the tongue, Picasso style. 
But this version of the story is of course contested, denied, even put away in a drawer of the tale, myth and rumor, so not to discredit the artist. But the elders of this Ivorian village firmly attest this story. After all, what interests would they have to lie? If it wasn't in 1968 because Picasso was too old, maybe it was years earlier. Don't you think? In my opinion at least, and many of us value this argument. I regret the bad faith of certain media and art ambassadors who refute the story of this trip and the African influence more than present in ev and evident in the Picasso's uh, works. Others found a way to justify it when Picasso himself, himself claimed, and I quote, Negro art, I don't know. I mean, this sentence couldn't be clearer, don't you think? And the media tries to build a story around this sentence by inserting a context and interpretation which does not have to be, suggesting that this is not what he wanted to say. Mm. Let's call a cat a cat, like we say in French. Picasso had a lot of African art in his collection, a whole collection of so-called nigger art. He was inspired by this art that propelled his career, even going so far as to create an artistic current, the Cubism, to after hearing him say uh, Afri African art, nigger art, I don't know. While he was a fervent admirer and had a large private collection, beautiful ingratitude and content. Or when he declared a quote from Philip Messinger, said a few years ago, I quote, immature people imitate, great artists still, divert by itself, good artists copy, great artists still, he talk. for itself and speak a volume about the character. As I said at the beginning of this video, most of the artists of the time were inspired by African art, to name a few. Kisting, Van Dugan, De Vlaminck, De Rain, Matisse, Brancudi, Modigliani, and so on. Modigliani also inspired another young artist and encouraged her to go in this uh, style of creation. And all this interest in African art, propelled by a Picasso at the greatest of his genius, accompanied by his peers to lead to the current of Cubism. This is how Cubism draws his source from African art, in particular the Cuba art, which comes from Congo, Kichasa. It saddens me so much to read and see the alienation of some of our African public or even see some of our artists who feel proud and indebted to Picasso taking him for an example while he himself took his ideas from our ancestors while denigrating them. There's a problem somewhere. What is going on here? All this to tell you how much important it is to see the value of our continent, the value of your culture and your tradition that other could. Also take in consideration the value of the spirituality of your ancestors because everything is linked. You cannot accept one and reject the other one. Say yes to the culture and tradition and say no to the spirituality of your ancestor. 
to prefer to practice the religions of our spirituality that others have brought to us in the continent. To dispossess us of our powers like they dispossess us from everything else. Culture, art, tradition, wealth, spirituality, sovereignty, everything is linked. It is time to understand that and it is up to you. It is the time to understand it, to be able to take action because Africa will not rise again without one of these aspects. The longer we realize it, the longer Africa's renaissance will take time. It is up to you to want it or not. I degree. Maybe not so much. It is on this word that I say to you, see you soon for our next video. Thank you for your like and subscription. In the meantime, take good care of yourself and yours. May the Creator, the ancestors and our guides keep us. We are together. To Lingana, to Sangana, Ingeta. Butu is a sila, mohi zukuta, mohi do tangu ekweni, mohi do tangu ekweni.